Greetings, fellow countrymen. Today we can finally put down our weapons and relieve ourselves of the burdens of war. For I proudly declare on this gracious day that we have won the long but well fought war. I would like to take a moment to honor all of those lives lost during this conflict. I was born and raised in our beloved Vietnam, and it has always pained me to see it divided in two, ruled under different governments, while in reality they were being populated with the same people, with the same blood flowing through their veins. This is why I dedicate my entire life to the reunification of our land and our people. This task alone would have taken a lifetime, but I had no such luxury. To see my beloved people separated by an invisible line of politics, nonsense, and on top of that, the French Union trying to reconquer us. Stripped of our well-deserved freedom had made us furious beyond compare. And not only that, the United States decided to interfere with a war they had nothing to do with. Acting as if this was their land, their territory, their home. Acting as if they were the justified hands of God. Disgraceful. Thankfully, with the assistance of our dedicated and royal officials and our gracious partners, China and Russia, we have been able to, against all odds, regain our freedom and unify our land. Let us welcome these representatives. Hello, brother. I'm honored to be here for you have achieved an incredible feat. Through sheer willpower, we have managed to outsmart and outmaneuver what used to be the strongest military in the world. Yes, we must appreciate your military prowess and usage of unconventional methods, for it was the only possible way for you to achieve your goals. I can only start to imagine what sorts of tricks you have under your sleeves. I am sure the world will tell tales of these battles for years to come. Historians will claim this as a true perspective, traditional or orthodox that is. We have endured through this difficult and painful conflict so that the North and South could live together in harmony. No more segregation, no more exclusion, no more conflicts. Let us put our past behind us and move forward together into a brighter future, a brighter Vietnam. Let us celebrate our newly acquired unity, stability, and equality. Greetings, my fellow citizens of the United States of America. For the first time in US history, we have suffered a major defeat. I want to start by sincerely apologizing to every single family of those we lost during the conflict. After thousands of struggles, billions of dollars spent and thousands of Americans' lives lost, we have failed to achieve our goals. But in the end, you must ask yourself, what are those goals? Why have we fought a foreign war for so long? We, we waged war against Vietnam because one reason, because we were fighting to protect the freedom of its people and from its government. We fought against the communist control. We fought for the interests of their people and we fought for order and peace. That's not it. But we also seek to protect our ally friends from their time of need. We, oui, we, oui, yes. The United States fought bravely for us, but there was nothing else we could have done against those apprehensive Vietnamese men. We were lacking in manpower and resources while being confronted with immoral warfare strategies that should put their leaders behind their bars for war crimes. We were fighting for a free people of South Vietnam. We were defending them in the name of diplomacy. We had no reason other than justice for why we fought this distant war. But justice was all the reason we needed. As I've stated before, no event in American history is more misunderstood than the Vietnam War. It was misreported then and it is misremembered now. Over those long arduous years, we have been demoralized by the large death tolls and seeing the bodies of our brave young soldiers. But let us not forget, most of us were in, in favor of waging war. Most of us were in favor of assisting our ally friends and most of us wanted to fight for what was right, regardless of the outcome. The United States of America might have lost, but it should be clear that in the end we were fighting for freedom, for diplomacy and for justice. Well, as you can see from this video of President Nixon, the government still firmly believes in their actions against war. I, Gwendolyn Levy, completely agree with this. Many believe that my critically acclaimed book, America in Vietnam, is a controversial argument against what is considered traditional or orthodox view. While this might be true, my essentially revisionist perspective sheds light on extremely critical points that otherwise might have been overlooked due to overpowering results of the war itself. As far as the saying goes, Maybe we should not let history be written by the winners. There is a common false opinion that the United States government went against public opinion and waged war. 
This statement is completely false because only two members of the U.S. Congress voted against the notion and the majority of the public was initially supporting the war. The U.S. may have lost, but they were fighting for what was right. They fought on moral grounds whilst the communist troops of the North used dirty tricks and guerrilla warfare against U.S. troops. They attacked during the night, ambushed the troops and camouflaged with native civilians. However, the U.S. is strong. And it was only when we saw the countless bodies of our brave young soldiers that we decided that fighting this war was futile. This war started with Truman, followed by Eisenhower and Kennedy, and ended with our extinct Nixon. By that time, they had already most likely forgotten why they were fighting the war in the first place. By looking back, we have been able to learn much what was beneath the surface. That is the benefit of the revisionist historian, such as myself.